It's seven o'clock. I call to order the June 14th, 2022 Prairie Township Board of Trustees meeting. Let's call the roll. What's that? Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, Pledge of Allegiance first, yes. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Trustee Hartshorn? Yes. Trustee Mears? Yes. Trustee Music? Yes. All right. This evening we have a guest speaker, Wes and Amy Wright. It was only Amy. Okay, Amy. <laughs> um, I, just first of all, thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, I just want to speak on the recent storms, but they're not recent for Wes and I. Um, the property that we live on is right down the road, and it's been in my family for over 50 years. And for 50 years, the property has flooded. Um, and quite honestly, Wes and I are tired of it. it. It brings an enormous amount of property damage because of 50 acres to our north and 20 acres to our south that we don't own that drain onto our property and can't get under the road. So the water cannot get under that culvert. We've tried to deal with soil and water, the county engineer. They keep saying it's adequate, it's not. Um, it hasn't been for 50 years. And now with no-till farming, for the last 16 years that we've lived there, we've had to spend countless hours throughout the year cleaning up all the corn cobs that come onto our property. And if you don't know what that's like, please drive by um, because the, the damage to our pond, to our spring, the water is now non-potable. For 150 years, that artesian spring serviced that property and it was drinkable and I drank it as a child. And my dad had to take it out of service in 86 because of all the runoff. Um, we have algae blooms that we can't control in the spring because every spring we get all the fertilizer runoff from that 50 acres, uh, plus all of the corn, cobs and everything else. And we try hard to be a good neighbor. We try to take care of our property, um, but we are tired of dealing with everyone else's crap. Um, and we've got 50 acres of corn cobs coming onto our property that destroy it. And, and if you've not fished out a pond of corn cobs, it's an enormous amount of work. Uh, we have corn cobs everywhere. And we need help from the township because obviously the county um, does not want to do anything. It's nice they pave the road, but instead of grinding it, they added three more inches of pavement that now adds three more inches of dam to our property. So it's even harder for water to go across with the most recent paving that they did. Um, it just sits there. We need help. We're getting to the point where we will be suing everyone um, because we can't get anything done. Our property cannot serve as a retention pond for Perry Township. Um, and we are not going to allow it anymore. And if it's okay to dam your property, the county has chosen to dam the road there. Uh, it's essentially a dam where water can't get through. We're gonna start damming our property to prevent all the water damage. Um, but at this point, we need help. Uh, we're just kind of throwing our hands up because nobody seems to care about water and how it moves through this township unless you're a farmer and God bless them, but it's the most subsidized industry in the United States. Um, and no one wants to do anything to help everyone else. And I think we need to start throwing money at how water drains in Perry Township. And I know I'm not the only property. There's others out there. Uh, but at some point in time, we've got to address the water issues. And, and quite honestly, we're tired of bearing the brunt of it. But I do appreciate the opportunity. Um, I, I know I posted a video to you. Um, I have them going back for the 16 years that we've lived there. So this is not new. This, I've got pictures from, the 50, from 50 years ago showing the flooding. Um, but we need help. And we're, we're asking for help because we need intervention somehow. But thank you. Thank you. So I... Amy, I know when you contacted me, you asked me to get a hold of Mr. Gruner. I did call him. I also talked to Brian Moon. I think that's his name. No, Ben Moore. You dealt with him? Okay. And I also talked to Soil and Water numerous occasions. They've said that they have dealt with you over the years. And they said what it, what it is is this landowner on the other side of the road. And it's it's not. I, I know, but I, I'm just telling. It's not. I know what. I know what they're, saying. what they're saying. I know what they're saying. But and it's not. Okay, but after dealing with them, and they said that at one time, uh, did the floors say something to you about putting up something? 
No, we have tried fences to hold the corn cobs back. Mm -hmm. uh, the weight of the corn cobs blows it out. Okay. So we've tried everything. We asked Byron today, can you can you put up something stronger like chain link that will help hold things back? Mm -hmm. And he he refused. I said, can you go over to Sean's property and help excavate some of that alcohol? It's, it, trust me, it will not make a difference, but I'm happy to show okay. the county that that won't help. Okay. And and like I said, you know, from talking, talking to Mr. Gruner and Mr. Moore, and then talking to Soil and Water, uh, they said it's a property owner on the other side of those. And they said the three properties that a new ditch would have to be or put tile. Help me. Not tile. Tile won't solve it. <laughs> well, whatever it is, tile or whatever, that, that property has to be torn up. And then it, the tile put in from, from yours over there and then down past deck and into that field. But that's what they said. And they said it would it would be a petition. It could take years. Because it's, it's been years. I know, but I'm saying with those people on the other side, because they would have to, they would have to assess those properties. So, I mean, that's the way I was explained. And I did ask them to attend this evening because you asked me to have them here. Um, and I, they're not here. So, yeah. So, I just wanted you to know that I didn't, I did do a look. Okay. Any questions, comments? I saw you out there today. <laughs> I drove, I, drove, I drove past uh, I drove past your property multiple times since the last video just to see what it looks like at different storms just so I can be more informed on it. Um, I love the property. It's beautiful. Thank you. So I No, I'm taking my own notes, so don't mind me. I've, I've seen the videos. I've seen everything. I understand the problem. And uh, Trustee Mears has already dove into this. Yeah. There may be a few other places that we can look, <clears throat> talk with Kramer and Associates and CN, if there's an engineering solution that may fit. If we have an engineered solution that we take to Paul Gruner, I think he'd be much more open to the discussion I know how he sometimes tunes out people. Mm -hmm. um, so we can talk with them and see if there's anything uh, that we can add to the conversation. Uh, I know it is a county road, mm -hmm. so we are limited in that regard. Um, but we can definitely act as an intermediary and try to push this up the hill. And we'll do that. Thank you. Can I ask just for my knowledge, what... In the last 16 years, obviously, the no-till has probably exacerbated that problem. What has been done short of just putting up a fence? Is, is that it? or the, the farmer refuses to do anything. Um, Soil and Water talked a few years ago about <clears throat> planting, getting seeds to plant a certain type of grass that will grow, and it's a very strong, sturdy grass. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to call it a prairie grass, but it's... It, it will Johnson grow. grass? Uh, no, it wasn't yeah. that. Johnson. They get seed from Johnson. USDA. Okay. And they said that there was a, a like a one year wait for the seed to get that. Well, this has been five years ago. Okay. Um, we have we've put the fence up multiple times. At this point in time, now we're going to look at buying um, large the, the fence you can buy of gravel, mm -hmm. the big blocks that they use for retaining walls, and just lining it with that and leaving just enough room at the for it to start <laughs> through. Um, but I figure it's not going under the road and we've just got to keep it from coming on our property because we can't handle the water. But it seems like it's always our expense and our time and our labor to work on a problem that isn't ours. We just have to deal with it. And to me, that's wrong. It's, it's wrong to, to do this and damage another property without impunity and to not care that you're throwing probably five tons of corn cob on it multiple times a year and not care. And, and we're like, this is exhausting to do this. I find probably a hundred fish out by the road every time it, it floods. And we're not talking big rains. A half an inch floods our property. So when you have 50 acres draining, a half an inch will do it. So it's just tiring to see that no one cares and nothing is done. And at this point, you know, we just look at all the expense that we've got in this. and the county doesn't want to help and the engineer is wrong uh, because the, the culvert is not large enough 
to handle the water. Okay. It's also probably about a hundred years old and it's all rusted. So it's going to fall in before long anyway, but. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? No, I'm good. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate your time. <clears throat> Uh, at this time, I make a motion to accept the con the consent agenda as provided. Second that motion. Trustee Music. Yes. Trustee Hartshorn. Yes. Trustee Mears. Yes. Hey, this thoughts yeah. report. Okay, so just a few things. Um, I have a little bit of an update with the situation dealing with the IRS and with Social Security. Um, on June 6th, I was finally able to make contact with a representative with the IRS. Following our con phone conversation, he had requested that I forward an email regarding all the issues and notices received regarding the state of the township's tax withholding filing. Um, he has since forwarded my contact information and my email to their civil division. However, he did advise that it may take a while to get a response. Uh, what I forward to them was since the last meeting, I received notice where I filed the 941 amendments to try and recoup what was paid in error to Social Security. I received notice back dated May 25th, stating that they received our amended 941s. However, the amount originally reported does not match their records. So that creates a little bit of a problem because with the assistance of UAN, I pulled from the UAN system and provided the original totals according to the UAN. And now the IRS is saying that what's in the UAN doesn't match what was actually filed with the IRS. So that causes a little bit of a problem. That's why they're trying to help get me in contact with somebody to actually try to sort <coughs> through and figure out what's going on with the account. Is that just over the, the, we had two a few while back, the, mm -hmm. the discrepancies, is that what they're saying doesn't match up? No, what, what the UAN shows for the original filings that I had to amend to try to get back the social security was paid in error. Mm -hmm. What I put on my 941 amendments as the original amounts, according to what UAN had, mm -hmm doesn't match what was actually filed okay. with the IRS. Okay. Then last meeting, we had discussed the notice that I, we had received showing that we had an amount owed of $5,715.27. Um, you guys had approved for me to go ahead and pay that. I issued a check on May 12th for that. Then on May 6th, I received another notice. June 6th. Oh, yes, sorry. June 6th, I received another notice with relation to the March 31st, 2021 filing again, showing a different amount being owed. So that's part of where I'm at right now. I told him I don't want to do anything else with the account until I can get somebody to actually set and go through when we can figure out what where we're at, you know, what's missing, what wasn't paid, what may have been paid later, that type of stuff, because I don't want to keep sending them money and then them turn around and send us a different notice with a different amount. Has the auditor's office been receptive in helping facilitate this conversation? The auditor's office isn't involved with it at all because- well, you, because of the UAN support is what I was talking right. about. Right, they really, they said all they can go by is what's in the UAN system. And that's, that's all they could help me with. So I'm just waiting now to hear back from the IRS. Um, and of course, I followed up with travelers because we had appealed to travelers for reimbursement from the bond for the $25,000 that we had to pay out due to the error. And they're saying that until we hear yes or no what Social Security is going to do, they're not going to make any kind of determination. So that's kind of where we're at with the whole IRS and Social Security thing. Have we heard anything back from OPERS on this topic either? OPERS is fine. They, I mean, we've paid them what needed to be paid. The one thing that I'm a little concerned about, and Karen and I have talked about this, because Karen actually 
got a letter that stated the amounts that were paid mm -hmm. to OPERS. She gets the credit for the hours, but it says she'll never receive any benefit from the money. So even the portion that would have been her portion and the portion that would have been the township, they, it said that she'll never receive benefit from that. So I don't know where that money even goes then at this point. Right. Because we had to pay it to them. So it's just kind of a. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. It's, it's, a, it's a mess. Yeah. And then aside from that, Trustee Mares and myself met with Brookville and New Lebanon um, on May 16th and then again on May 23rd to discuss the need for the new fire levy. Um, I met with Trustee Hartshorn and Mr. Hoops to discuss the road and cemetery budget. I attended an Ohio Township Association webinar demystifying grants, speaking tools and tips for success. And then I'm looking at right now, there's a couple um, Ohio Township Association trainings for the month of June, communicating township financial needs without going to jail, constructing competitive bidding and procurement for township FOs. And then I have um, gone to attend the Montgomery County Township Association meeting on June 23rd. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Uh, road and cemetery report. Uh, so cemeteries, we had three burials and one cremation at Pleasant Hill Cemetery. Uh, we removed 18 dump truck loads of brush from Pleasant Hill Cemetery. Uh, we've been planting grass seed and working on graves and weather permits. For the road department, we've completed our second pass of roadside mowing. We did a demo with a Duro patcher last Wednesday. Uh, to fill spots in at Pleasant Hill Cemetery and a few spots on Steck Road. We cleaned the trees away from the road along Air Hill, Heater, and school <clears throat> Schoolhouse. We completely reworked and aligned the ditches on Air Hill on at the hill on Providence Road. And uh, we want to spend a send a special thanks to City of Brookville for helping to clean up Air Hill last night. And next week, we plan on putting in a 36-inch culvert pipe on Air Hill Road, and Air Hill will be closed for four days. We have posted that notice as well, okay. I believe. Thank you for filling in tonight. Yes, you're welcome. Do we want to talk about the Bobcat now, or do we want to wait until old business? We can get old business. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Police Department. Our stats are uh, published to the website. Uh, I spoke with uh, Chief Brayhoff of the Russellville Point uh, Police Department, who is over this region for small agencies and townships, the Ohio Association of Chief of Police. I've been communicating with him to see if we can't get something passed up uh, to the state of Ohio, uh, looking for some fuel relief for the small townships and agencies. Um, he came back with an idea of either doing a grant or reimbursement, but he's open to ideas before everything's officially pushed up uh, to the executive branch and then on up to uh, the governor's office. Um, so if anybody has any additional ideas over the next few days, uh, just let me know and I'll send those off uh, to Chief Freyhoff as well. I also spoke with uh, State Representative Rodney Creech regarding the same thing. Um, he spoke about uh, potentially uh, using the ARPA funds for fuel relief. Um, he said once the money hits the general fund that you know there's money there that could be set aside for that. I don't know what's all involved in that. That was just something that he threw up. Uh, one thing I would suggest um, if we could check in to see how much it would cost to have our own fuel system. I know it's probably going to be expensive up front, but if we can get a good rate in on fuel, we can lock that in. Um, we can at least just do a cost analysis to see if we're going to be saving any money going in that direction, especially with the cost of fuel going up. Um, that's what I have with those things. Um, I do ask the board if someone would not mind uh, calling in an executive session for 121.22 uh, G1 for compensation of a public employee. 
At this time, I make a motion in accordance with Ohio Revised Code Section 121.22, Paragraph G1. I move that we adjourn into executive session to discuss the compensation of a public employee. <clears throat> Trustee Mears? Yes. Trustee Hartshorn? Yes. Trustee Music? Yes. Right. At this time, I make a motion to return to the regular session. Second that. Trustee Mears? Yes. Trustee Hartshorn? Yes. Trustee Music? Yes. Okay. At this time, I make a motion to increase Officer Barga's sal salary to $17 an hour and a $1,373.73 retention bonus. Second that motion. I need an effective date. Chief, is that effective at the end of the month for Officer Barga? Yeah. July 1st. July 1st. Okay. Trustee Music? Yes. Trustee Hartshorn? Yes. Trustee Mears? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Zoning department. Let me clean up the lake here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, just a reminder that the office will be closed Monday, June 20th, Juneteenth day. Um, trash, as of today, we've received 1,075 trash payments and uh, I will be mailing out the third quarter trash bills by June 30th. So we'll get those in early July. Uh, I sent each of the trustees a copy of the nuisance abatement work agreement letter on June 6, 2022 from Coolidge Wall Law Firm. And we need a motion from the trustees if you want to move forward with engaging in their services. You want to do that now or you guys know who that is right yes. uh, okay. <clears throat> okay i make a motion to accept coolidge wall law firm to assist with our nuisance abatement work second trustee mirrors yes trustee hartshorn yes trustee music yes thank you is that we have, um, I have two pending permits. I've issued since the last trustee meeting, three swimming pool permits, one single family home, two home additions, and one overhead structure. Um, I'm in the process of scheduling two nuisance abatement hearings with the trustees for Friday, July 15th uh, at 2 p.m. And because of the gas prices, we need to look at increasing the mowing fees. Right now, our fees are $500 for the first man hour and additional $100 for each hour forward. Do you guys want to talk about that? Yeah. So didn't, didn't uh, Mr. Hoop state that he wanted to see a, a bit more of an increase on this to deter people yes. from leaving it till it gets to a point where we have to mow it. Mm -hmm. uh, wasn't his number $1,500 for the first hour? Yes, $1,500 for the first hour and $500 for every additional hour. I would like to maybe, do you know anything about this? Yes. What's the other townships charge? Oh, I'm, I don't know any of that. I would like to get that information first. Like that's that that's $1,000. Well, additional. Yeah, the, the, the problem is every year we have. Yeah, I know, but upwards of 10 different properties that we have to take it's time the out same of. Same ones every year. And it goes on their taxes and they don't pay the taxes. So we're not getting the money. So we're out so, anyway. Okay. So we'll get with yeah. Caleb, have him check on what the area yeah. is running for okay. that. And we just make, yeah. And we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out okay. at our next meeting. Okay. Sorry. That's fine. Um, and I wanted to remind everyone to please check with my office before putting up a building or whatever. Uh, to see if anybody needs to get a permit. And I also want to thank you gentlemen and ladies 
that help put the liner in the dumpster out there. <laughs> Thank you for your help. And that's all I have. All right, great. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, we're on to the trustee reports. So for the last month, I've uh, continued to administer and update the township social media, perform general IT ma management, maintenance, and upkeep of township systems. I worked with OASIS on the fire levy information webpage and survey development, which is now live. That went live yesterday. Uh, and, and I investigated software licensing for township use. The roads and cemeteries, I continued my weekly driving inspections of township roads, cemeteries, and nuisance properties. I have been researching information on township tax revenue, reviewing papers on the impacts of agricultural tax discounts. I spent some time investigating drainage issues in Piermont. Uh, and that is all that I have for now. Trustee Mears. Okay. Uh, first off, I want to thank uh, the residents of, of the township that were out last night helping with uh, cleaning up. Just reminded me of the tornadoes. Also, thank you to the City of Brookville Maintenance Department and uh, their assistance last night with the road crew. Um, so, uh, let's see, ha, um, have been helping Miss um, Kaler with zoning. She has sent out several letters regarding mowing and cleaning up the property. At one time, we had over 20 properties that needed mowed, and I believe that is down to 7 10. It's like more like 10 now. 10, okay. Um, also want to let the residents know that we are working on the property in Piermont, corner of Brookville, Piermont, and Sulphur Springs. This property has recently been sold, uh, and that's why we're working with the land bank to have it tore down. Per their lawyers, they have advised us to stay off the property. That is why it has not been mowed. Um, my husband and myself put up flags on graves at Eversol Cemetery, was in contact with the VFW in Brookville. They took care of Piermont and Pleasant Hill. They also bought a new flag for the cemetery at Piermont. So thank you to all, all your, for all your help and services. Also, Brookville Flower Shop for the donation of the flowers for the planners at Piermont was a good turnout. And thank you to everyone who attended. Uh, Miss Girl and myself met again with Brookville and New Lebanon Fire Department City Managers. Thank you to my grandchildren, Sam and Swayze for helping pulling weeds in the flower beds. We aren't finished yet. <laughs> I had a resident stop, with, stop at my house with a concern about their basement flooding last two big rains. This has to do with the Wiley ditch. I have talked to soil and water and they're planning on coming out and assessing the issue. Been uh, waiting on Montgomery County Health Department to come out regarding a couple properties and still have had no one show up when they told us they were going to be there. Miss um, Wright contacted me <coughs> and you know what I did. Um, <laughs> uh, and then uh, received a phone call on Tuesday morning about the flowers being removed from the cemetery. Uh, and I, I informed the person that if flowers or decorations were put on the headstones or foundation, then they were would not, if they were put on the foundation or headstones, they would not be removed. So. Thank you. Trustee Music. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, last month, uh, I attended the Legislative Day in Columbus. Um, I've met with Chief Fletcher. Uh, to go over the fire levy. Last week, I was present at the uh, Dura Patcher. Uh, I've got to see that uh, in action. Um, attended Memorial Day ceremonies at Piermont and uh, went over to Clay Township and attended theirs as well. Uh, I think that's it for now. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. If we ever do get enough money, I want to buy that machine. <laughs> so, it's awesome. I'd like to talk about it. New business. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Old business. Uh, first thing is to discuss the cemetery price increases that we discussed last month. We, uh, Mr. Hoops went through and added additional costs that were omitted during our first discussion. Correct. Not on purpose. But oh, we, no, that we was intentional. Talking, right. Yes. Right. Intentional. So uh, only because we were, got some of them were the uh, foundation costs. We were waiting back to hear what the concrete was going to cost us. Right. Um, you know, we weren't quite sure on those and timing didn't fall correctly. So, so we approved what we had in the original. Right. And Caleb got back with us on this. Right. 
So was there any comments on what Mr. Hoops provided? Yep. I think they're in line with the surrounding areas. They're, yep. they're not exorbitant. Yeah. They do reflect an increase that we haven't done in a few years. With the talks of the cemeteries, we, we can't take care of the cemeteries if we don't increase the prices. It's unfortunate, but it's it's how we have to operate. Okay, so if there's no questions on the increased costs, then I make a motion to apply the increase for cemetery costs with an effective date of July 1st as written or as submitted, sorry. I second the motion. Trustee Music? Yes. Trustee Harshworth? Yes. Trustee Mears? Yes. Okay, next topic is the fire levy working sessions. So it took a little bit longer to get the survey and the web page together, um, but it is up. I do ask anybody here, anybody watching at a later time on the recording of this meeting, please take the time to go to the Township website, read the information. If you have questions, please let us know. We know that levies are not a popular topic, but for this township, <clears throat> we're at a point where we're at a crossroads. Um, there's a number of levies over the next couple of years that are gonna be coming out. They're not meant to be exorbitant. They're meant to ensure this, the safety and security and the services that every resident requires for their home. That would be this year, we're doing a fire levy. I think in the next year, we're gonna be talking about the police levy. And we haven't, we've had initial conversations on the possibility of a cemetery levy down the road. Um, we only have so many graves in the cemeteries. When those are sold, they're sold and we have to take care of the cemeteries in perpetuity. Um, I did see that the house behind Pleasant Hill recently went up for sale yes. and we didn't know. <laughs> yes, actually sold. We, we've talked about that that property for years of extending that, that cemetery. So that unfortunately uh, switched hands. Um, so I know trustee music, you're, you're going to be out of town next week, next week. Yep. Uh, everybody is seeing the responses to the survey. I think we have four yes. so far. Um, okay. we could try to do a special meeting Friday afternoon. If we have a, a sample size that works, um, I don't wanna limit it to that because if we say we're gonna have a special meeting, we're gonna have a special meeting um, because we need to finalize the millage for the levy and we can only do that in a special meeting. We cannot do that during a working session. So I think the, the goal now is for us to get to the point where we decide the millage and work with the county to get that official and then go back to uh, the city managers for New Lebanon and Brookville and tell them what our decision is. Okay. When did you say what day? I'm seeing Friday. This Friday? This Friday. 17th. At what time? Uh, let's say 4 p.m. 4? Yeah. Does that work with you? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, it should be fine. So I'll say, I'll say one thing about it, and I see... <laughs> One of the uh, questions on the survey was, you know, I'm already taxed too much. And the one was, you know, I, I mean, the, they pay more taxes than ever, than most sure. people. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no doubt in my mind, if you've lived here for any amount of time, your taxes have probably jumped exorbitantly. This is the one thing that your taxes actually affect you. The one thing. I mean, everything else is kind of a give, you know, the, the mental health levies that are out there, you know, this levy, that levy. This is the one that when you vote down because my taxes are too high, affects the safety of your home and your family. So I just want to throw that out there. That it, and vote, and vote down all the other tax, all the other levies you want to, okay? This is the one that truly affects you. So well, this one, please. This one, please. Right. Sorry, Chief, but I just want to. Thank <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you. So, it matter next year, okay? <laughs> and and I, I think it's important to state the information that's on that web page. It does break out based on an approximate property value. I think we went up to two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollar property value. So even if your property is evaluated higher than two hundred thousand dollars, you get an idea of the steps involved. I think for a hundred thousand dollar house at the at the 
I of course don't have it in front of me. I, so yeah, I don't have, have numbers. <laughs> um, it's a it's a couple hundred dollars. One hundred twenty dollars. It's one hundred twenty dollars for a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like point twenty eight cents a day. Something like that. Right, because yes. we can't we did calculate that out. Um, and I, you know, we said this during the last meeting. I'll say it again because it is worth repeating. If there's no fire services in Perry Township, homeowners insurance is going to be explosive. They already ask you where the nearest fire hydrant is, where the nearest fire department is. Do you have a pond? Do you have water on your property? Um, we are. And the catch right now that we're dealing with is one we're we're trying to come current on what we owe for what we're paying for to get fire services for the township. Prices have gone up and we've been upside down for the last couple of years. Uh, that's a fair statement. The other thing is, is that we're in a contract year because they we have only been doing uh, the fire contracts for three years at a shot, which I, I personally think that it should be at least if we can get them to do it at a five to 10, somewhere in that range. Um, because if we don't lock it in for a longer term, we're gonna end up having discrepancies within the next 10 years, talking about a fire levy again. I don't want that. Will it happen? Yes, but we don't wanna talk about it sooner than we have to. So I, I, once again, I ask everyone to please go out to the Township website if you don't know where it is. Uh, you can find us on Facebook and it links to the website there. Um, the website actually is perrytownship-mcoh.org. And right on the front page, there's a banner at the top that says uh, fire levy, 2022 fire levy information and survey. So you can click right there and it'll take you to it. And all of the elected officials up here uh, receive a copy of those responses as soon as they're submitted. And that's what we're gonna take with us into the special meeting on Friday, <clears throat> because it's our job to do what's best for the township. But I think at every turn, everybody on this side of the table up here looks to the residents, hear what they think. We can't always make everybody happy. We do what we can within our means. And uh, I think over the last couple of years, we've done a good job. Could we do better? Yes. We're striving. We're striving to do better. So any I've other? I had one comment to yes. kind of piggyback off of where you were talking about with the insurance. Mm -hmm. You had kind of made the comment about, you know, you already asked, you know, where's the closest fire hydrant? Do you have a pool close to you? Do you have a body of water? Those questions kind of go away if we don't have the services, because if we don't have the services, we don't have anybody capable to pull those water sources to use those. So, you know, you can have all the water you want, but if you don't have the services that have the equipment to gain access to that water, that water being close to you doesn't help either. Discussions I've had with residents about this is that uh, if I call 911, they're just going to show up. And the response was, if we're not under contract, we can't. Yeah. And they, they, they're they, liable. They, they, <laughs> girl that no, they will not be coming. Yeah, they, they, they legally cannot. No. And, and, you know, chief, whichever chief, whatever it's at, has no legal authority there. Yeah. So he, he's, you know, my hands are tied on this. There's nothing I can do. Like that's this so right and and, and the pro basically the process where we're at right now is that we haven't been able to work out a millage with the fire departments because they won't tell us what they need. They are expecting us to come up with a millage that works for Perry Township. Then they'll evaluate it. Then they'll talk about the contract if that fits their needs. Um, we're, we're almost being decapped. Yeah, Tunis. and it's it's. It's not a good position to be in. We do have some leverage. Um, we don't have much just because of how the, the relationships with the city managers and the fire departments over the last handful of years have deteriorated. They won't come here for a meeting. We have to send a single trustee and the fiscal officer to meet with them because they won't come here for a meeting. I think that says a lot. So... Okay, uh, the other topic for old business was the uh, Bobcat purchase. Mm -hmm. I know this is what you've been waiting for, right? <laughs> Zach said, or uh, sorry, Zach. Caleb said, don't come back without it. Is that what he said? Yeah. The orders. Okay. 
So we reviewed, we all reviewed the uh, estimates. Caleb had sent those to us. Um, and I think the last time we talked, we had said that since they were all similarly priced, but the actual Bobcat estimate came with the included the tools that were needed for the work that the township needs to be able to do with it. Um, I think that's where we were leaning. Does anyone have anything other than, well, I'll just say, what, what are your opinions on the, the current estimates? And do you still feel the way that you felt the last time we discussed this? Yeah, but my opinion on anything uh, when it comes to making a purchase, and it usually holds true, is that it's always cheaper to do it now <coughs> just to wait. So uh, I, I, I deal that with, with my own business. If I know that a piece of equipment's coming, I know that it's gonna be popular or I know we're gonna need it. I just, I, I make sure we, we get it. Um, How far are we out? Uh, months. months. Months, yeah. And then Caleb said that it, they were saying it, usually it's about two months. At least. And they've had a few instances where they've come in a little earlier than that. But I know that you guys already have projects yes. that you can't do because of this. Yes. Um, and so the people that are now here, they didn't hear this discussion last time. <laughs> we do have a John Deere tractor that serves the township little to no purpose that we will be selling. Yeah, that's how much. Offset some of the cost of uh, acquiring the skid loader. So uh, this will not be all out of Hawk from the tax money that we get for the roads and uh, the permissive funds. So what this this also this this allows us to be able to do more in kind labor to well, make us more attractive, yes. more, more competitive. That's that's a very good point. For a lot of the work that we do with the state through the Ohio Public Works Commission, we don't have a lot of money like a lot of municipalities have to pay their percentage of the work to get projects approved. We have to do in kind labor. We have two and a half. Well, I, I don't want to call Dave Stack. Or, uh, What's his name? Steffi. 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 I say I called him a stack, and you can hold that over him. It's all right. Um, <laughs> we have uh, two full time and one part time person, and we have a full township to take care of with the cemeteries, the roads, the mowing, uh, the cleanups, and general maintenance around the township. So when we have to do when we submit a project to the state, <clears throat> get uh, a grant or monies to cover that work. We have no choice but to do in-kind labor. And right now, the, the work at uh, the Wolf Creek Watershed, uh, we didn't have the equipment to do that work. And we literally just had to pay the money to get our part of that project done because after the tornadoes, Wolf Creek was all jammed up and it was a mess. Um, so this does give us a lot more options on work that we will be doing in the near future that we have to do. Um, and it will cut down on uh, how many times we have to go and rent equipment, which we do, I'll say fairly often. Um, it's within the budget, but having this kind of equipment available, we may have to rent an attachment, we wouldn't have to actually rent the equipment. So are we good to make a motion on this? Okay, then I will make a motion to accept the bid from Bobcat for the T770 T4 Bobcat with all the attachments that are on the estimate. I believe that cost was estimated at $85,000. Yes, it's, 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 it's estimated. Change. Yeah. Right. This is an old bid from February. Right. Uh, the new one <laughs> was not able to print it off due to the power outage. Right. I'm at the shop. Uh, okay. So the motion's on the floor. Uh, okay. Trustee Mears? Yes. Trustee Harshorn? Yes. Trustee Music? Yes. Okay. Do we have any other? No, it went up $4,000 in two months, three months. Correct. So that's, Correct. that's what we're seeing, everything. So do we have any other topics for old business? <clears throat> okay. Moving on to new business. Uh, we have had water problems here in the township building. And after some investigation, found that the water tank needs to be replaced. There's an antiquated filter system that's in line that needs to be removed. 
And I'm just going to read the explanation here, here so everybody understands what we're talking about. Explanation of attached estimate for needed repair to water system. Found well pressure tank bladder bad and not able to hold needed air pressure. Pressure tank holds air against water system assisting the well pump. If pressure tank is bad, well pump will run more often in shorter cycles causing pump failure. Found an old paper cartridge sediment filter that was heavily clogged uh, and is needed to protect from the iron is needed to protect the iron filter and softener. They recommend a spin down 60 micron filter with a manual spin clean down valve, which will allow it to clean itself at the, I think it's at a push of a button, um, to filter the screen and down waste and sediment to the floor drain. The estimate that was provided for this work was for $1,459. That included the level four repair with up to one hour of labor and replace a 20 gallon well pressure tank. Also install in the new 60 micron spin down filter, install new 20 gallon pressure tank, T, new pressure switch, bleed down valve. So that, that, was, in, that was included in the, the 195, I believe. That, that's that was part important. of the labor. Yeah. Okay. So, and this estimate, of course, does include no tax, which we require. Are there any questions on this? What's, so it looks like it's, there was a filter that was never changed. It wasn't being maintained. Was there any, was there any education on that, on, on maintaining this system? Uh, is it something we need to get with our maintenance? Who, who's going to so, maintain this moving forward? So that that was discussed between me and Chief because he was a okay. cutting point on the estimate. Uh, historically, <clears throat> the road superintendent is who maintained and kept an eye on everything in the building. Um, I'm not sure if we were clear with Zach on that. Caleb. 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 See, I'm going to keep doing that. I, <laughs> I don't know why I do that um, with Caleb and uh, I need to talk with him about that. Um, Chief offered to go and get some bags of salt for the uh, softener. Uh, but we do need to talk about that with Caleb about uh, that being part of his duties as well. I know it may have been thought that because the police were here all the time that that was something they did, uh, but we need to fix that. Okay. So I'll talk with Caleb about that. Uh, probably tomorrow morning. And if there's there's salt, may, the police department can put it in so Caleb at gas at five, six dollars yeah. a gallon so Caleb for them running over. Uh, and, and, that, and that's what I was thinking too, is that yeah. we, we could go and actually just get a pallet of salt. Yeah. The only problem is I don't know where we store it. Yeah. Once we figure that out, right. then I think it's as simple as making sure that there's right. five bags over here at any one time, we can yeah. store it over the maintenance garage. Um, and it's a phone call saying, hey, we're getting low on salt bring some more over. Yeah, that, um, yeah, we don't have a problem dumping it in. Yeah. It's just more than five bags, where are you going to store that over here? Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, with everything the way it is, I think we all need to kind of cut down, you know, instead of calling them, have them run all the way over here, you know. Right, yeah. right. Okay. Well, and the police officers do have cars, too, so they can't that way. They drew out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So any other comments, questions, concerns? Then I will make a motion to accept the estimate to fix the, the uh, well pressure tank and associated equipment for a cost of fourteen hundred fifty nine dollars. I'll second it. Trustee Music. Yes. Trustee Harshmore. Yes. Trustee Mears. Yes. Okay. Okay, visitors. Did anyone who would like to speak not put a check mark next to their name? I know we didn't have it on the paper, so I'm going to ask the question before we get started. Is there anyone that didn't that wants to speak that didn't mark on here? You'd like to speak again? On a different subject, yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we will start. We still have new new business to talk about. 
Was there more new business? Yes, I still have one. Oh, okay. <laughs> I said, was there any more new business? No, go ahead. Okay, I didn't know that was between you three. No, okay. Um, so talking about the sale of the John Deere tractor, we'd like to go ahead and sell that. Uh, we also have a concrete mixer as a motor that does not run. We'd like to sell that as well on good deals. Uh, the other item we'd like to sell is the archway uh, gates. That's the gates that were in the archway. I would like to sell those as well on good deals. Um, and then we'd also like to talk about running a crack sealer. It's 92 cents a pound. Uh, and we can purchase as much crack seal as we'd like or as little as we'd like to rent that machine. Um, so we Caleb did bring that up last time about. Yeah. We'd mm -hmm. like to rent one skid or buy one skid and includes the rental of the machine. So 92 cents per pound to have that machine. So we pay for what we use. Correct. And we get the free use of the equipment. Right. With it. Right. The rental fees built into the price. And then with that dirt patch that we demoed, Twin Township does have one. And we'd like to see if we can rent it from them somehow. Um, they're supposed to have their meeting tonight to discuss how they're going to rent it to us, what we're going to do to work that out. Yeah. Is that something we can proceed on conversation with them? How soon will you will they be getting back with you? Do you know? Uh, hopefully tomorrow or whenever they Just talk about so tonight. Maybe we could bring put that on the agenda for the work or the special okay. meeting. So it was to add to that, right. us purchasing the Bobcat with attachments, there is probably something there that we can help them with as well. Right. That, right. That's why the Bobcat is valuable to us so we can now trade machines right, to, to even out the cost for both of us. So, uh, you know, I'm not, I just wanted to, to bring up the Durapatcher. Uh, since I was at the demo, we, we went to a cemetery. Right. Uh, we, we went out to Steck, uh, Steck Road, right. fixed a couple of things. I mean, Pleasant Hill Cemetery is awful. Yes. Pleasant, yes. The, the, I mean, the, the road is just atrocious. Mm -hmm. um, the, I, I, before the meeting night, I went out there and just, just to get another, I try to drive them once a week at least. Um, it's, it would be a piece of equipment, if, I mean, even if we were to, to consider buying one ourselves here in the next couple of years, that we can do that whole cemetery. It's not technically designed for repaving, but it would be really hard for me to justify repaving the cemetery when we have plenty of roads that need repaired as well. Um, but I mean, as a, as a trustee, it's embarrassing for me. As a resident, it's embarrassing for me to think of cemeteries going, you know, cemetery processions going through there and people's cars bottoming out on these potholes. It's, it's embarrassing. So I would like to consider, or, you know, for the future, that you know, we're gonna see $5 gallon gas going up. People are gonna drive less. That is less gas tax the township will receive to go towards road repairs. Um, the company did have a five-year lease program um, that would stretch that cost out over five years. And I'd like to talk with Twin Township to see, do you guys see a cost savings? How much, you know, how, how far does this dollar go uh, where we're, you know, we're able to make some decent improvements right. uh, throughout the township <laughs> that need addressed, but also the cemeteries. I mean, it's, it would really, really improve the look of that. I don't well, know if anybody's seen it in, at all. If you go, it, it's, it's a small patch. If you guys want to leave here or tomorrow, you pull into Pleasant Hill, you go to the right. I mean, it's awful. And you probably miss it because it almost matches right. the color that's already there. There was a giant sinkhole right as you first went into the right. You now it's not smooth. It wasn't finished. It was just a demo. It was a small section. I mean, if you can imagine that with a little extra work, what that would look like through the entire cemetery, I think uh, it would just, it would change the whole look of it. It would be beautiful. So I would say that we have a, a use case if Twin Township, you said Twin, right? Yes. If Twin Township is open to working out a bartering deal or something, okay. let us use the equipment. Pleasant Hill Cemetery is a good use case for kind of yes. running that out. It fixes something for us that needs to be fixed and we get a good feel for the equipment and what it would take to operate it. And the cost was per per square was 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 really reasonable right. compared to say hot patching. Yeah, or uh, cold patch. Or, or, or something like that, cold patch, I'm sorry. So uh, I, I would say at yeah. the next meeting, if we, we can get all that information together, the information from Twin, the information on what it would cost to get, um, and also uh, Caleb to look at the current budget 
this may not be something that fits this year, but if we can work something out with twin gets us some usage with it, some familiarization, we could better justify the value of it. It would be something that we could then include <laughs> for next year and make that a priority. Um, in the meantime, we get to use the equipment, we get to fix some issues that we have. And uh, I think that's a- and, 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 and rebuild a relationship with Twin Township. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other thing, uh, I don't know, maybe Jason, you're gonna, I, we're gonna make a motion to approve them getting the uh, striper tonight. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's- Please, yeah. I, I, I've got those written. Down. Sorry, I just- I No, 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 you're good. Is, you're good. I just wanna make sure we did it. <clears throat> so uh, first I'll make a motion to place the concrete mixer, the Pleasant Hill Gates, and the John Deere on Gov deals as soon as possible. I'll second it. I'll, I'll second it. Trustee Music? Yes. Trustee Hartshorn? Yes. Trustee Mears? Yes. Okay. And then I don't have the, we discussed it last time, I don't have the price. 92 cents per pound. I know, but how much is a skid? Per I'm pound? not sure. See? It's around $2,000. So do we want to, we obviously we need to put some kind of cap on this. Right. Uh, a, a ceiling. We, yeah, because we haven't discussed how much we would get, what we plan to use it for. <laughs> I think we should table this as well. We need to have all those numbers in front of us before we approve it. Okay. Um, and that way we can lump that in with a special meeting. If we have it by then, if not, we'll deal with it the next so, meeting. So just to be clear, by Friday, next this Friday, uh, yeah, we have some numbers back by this Friday. We can we can make that part of our okay. Okay, I think that was everything that yes. you had. All right. Yep. Are there any other topics for new business? No, I'm good. Jason, yes. Go back to uh, Officer Barga's effective date. Yeah, I think June twenty seventh would be better. For the simple fact, that's the start of the new pay period that bleeds into July. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, I'll make a motion then to amend Officer Barga's uh, effective date for her salary increase to June 27th, 2022. I'll second it. Trustee Music? Yes. Trustee Hartshorn? Yes. Trustee Mears? Yes. Thank you, Chief. All right, anything else? Okay, on to visitors. Uh, Paula, is it Hoblet? Yes. Okay. Well, if you can speak tonight, I am one of many generations of Perry Township residents, as well as a registered voter. Uh, the issue I'm bringing tonight is the flowers being removed from Paramount Cemetery only, because I don't know anything about the other cemeteries. But on May 31st, which was the day after Memorial Day, I was at Paramount Cemetery between 9 and 10 o'clock, and all of my flowers were gone. I don't know, you probably don't know that I have lots and lots this is my cemetery list. The one in red is all my Paramount family. So what I need to know is, I did talk to someone else personally that day. Their flowers were gone as well. I'm not pointing fingers at anyone and I'm not mentioning any names. I just need some questions answered. Why were the flowers removed less than 12 hours from Memorial Day? Two, the posted notice at Piermont Cemetery says flowers and decorations to be removed March 1st and October 1st. No mention of Memorial Day about taking <clears throat> flowers off. Is this correct? Would you have more questions? Yes. Okay. We do limit comments to three. I know, I know. Sorry. It says, uh, so I just need to know if that is so, why were the flowers removed? And the last thing I have is, do you have any comments or questions for me? 
Okay. So I want to want to address this. I was I was very angry um, when I saw your post on Facebook. Yes, I very much so. I was uh I was sitting at my kids' baseball games. I saw the post and uh, I immediately called Caleb. Caleb, you did you? Okay, I don't. Caleb's our, our, our secretary, our, our sexton, cemetery sexton. Okay. He's in charge of not just cemeteries, but all of maintenance for Perry Township. Okay. So he he is he. We are his boss, just like. We are chief's boss. And then David is Caleb's employee. Right. Okay. So just the hierarchy. <laughs> um, no, Zach, I didn't, I didn't take all the flowers off. But I did remove anything that was not on a headstone or on a foundation. Per rule 15. 15 it says walkway. Regardless. Um, Okay, and I said, why? No, it's less than a day after Memorial Day. Yes. He said, well, yeah, I know. He said, I, I didn't want to. I looked at the weather. It to rain Tuesday or Wednesday and Thursday. First thing Friday morning, the mowing company comes in to mow, which I know this for sure. I mean, I've, I've seen them. 7.30 in the morning, they're there. So Caleb, this is his job, is to make sure that the cemeteries are ready and prepared to be taken care of. Okay. That's it. That's it. So I went, came home. Okay. I, I'm good with your explanation. At this point, I'm going to go look myself. So I come home, I drop my kids off the house and went and drove cemeteries, took pictures. I mean, I've got 30 some pictures on my phone of all of the graves in Piermont. And I'll just say Piermont because that's what we're talking about. Um, flowers everywhere, all over the place. Even in your picture, it shows flowers behind. So they weren't removed for any other purpose than to take care of the cemetery. If they weren't, and, and so my, my only suggestion on this was, gosh, you just weren't clear enough. Now, three days before Memorial Day, there was a Facebook post that said, make sure that all flowers, decorations are on headstones and foundations, which I thought, man, we really don't need to say that, but apparently we did because people are upset over it. So, you know, the, the Facebook post, 107 messages, comments. Um, no one ever contacted me. Now, they've contacted me since then. Um, you know, why, how, why? Why would you do this? So I've explained the same thing. Uh, Caleb lives in this township his entire life. His family lives in this township. His family moved a house from one road to another road. They have history here. He doesn't want these things removed. I mean, David doesn't want to go move flowers off people's cemeteries. I threw one away tonight on my way here. I stopped in Pleasant or Piermont. It's laying out in the middle of the grass. What am I supposed to do with it? I mean, I could pick somebody, I guess, just throw it up there. I mean, if that's if that's what we want to do, um, you, you know, and I, it, it's frustrating to me. Um, Frustrating to me too. I, I, and, and man, I, I've, I've talked to one of your family members who explained, even though you don't buy him a Christmas gift anymore because he's married. <laughs> right, he's um, off the list. <laughs> off the list. Um, you know how much you care for your family, and how important this is to you. And it it, it wasn't it wasn't personal. It, it really was. I understand that because um, I wasn't the only one affected. Right. Um, but it wasn't like we went through with the way the rules state. And you asked, you asked to the dates. That is a complete clean off. That's everything. Those two dates, we're going to get rid of everything. Okay. All Caleb's job is to make sure that the contract we signed with the mowing company can be fulfilled. And if they've got to go around, if there's shepherd's hooks, if there's things that might damage their equipment, it's up to Caleb to make sure that they're ready. He doesn't like to remove cemetery stuff. Okay. He absolutely hates it, hates it. And he sure as heck doesn't want to get a phone call at eight o'clock at night from me wanting to know why. Okay. So the Facebook post, I was never called. And I'm, you know, I'm upset over that because, and we see this all the time. Facebook does nothing more than validates our opinions. It validates our feelings. It is, it, it, it created strife between people who may not even know each other. 
It was ugly. It was name calling. It was. And it and did absolutely. do that. I know. It's okay. I don't care who did it. It did absolutely nothing constructive or helpful for anyone. Come to me. Come talk to me. I, I volunteered for this position. I asked you all to vote for me. Same as the rest of us did. Come talk to us. If you've got a complaint, please come talk to us. Don't air your opinions on Facebook and your grievances on Facebook for everyone to validate your opinions. That's all I ask. I have, I have one that needs to be clarified here. Number seven, I took a picture of that thing at Paramount Cemetery. All flowers, planters, pots, urns shall be removed two times a year or more often if decoration deteriorates. Cleanup dates are March 1st and October 1st. It does not say a word about Memorial Day. No, but, but there is rules in the actual deed that was signed for the cemetery that says the section can remove any decorations at any time. It's not um, deteriorated. They were not, but it was three days. There, there were flowers that were blown all over the place. They did not. So one of the things that came up, and, and this wasn't mentioned, I don't think, anywhere. And I'll tell you that just putting it on a headstone doesn't guarantee it'll be on a headstone within an hour. It's a go to Pleasant Hill tonight when you leave here. Go drive through. If these guys weren't so busy cleaning up storm damage the last two days, I'd be upset with them. Why are flowers everywhere? Well, no, everywhere in that cemetery. It looks awful. Right. Awful. Okay. If you knew ahead of time, this thing was on Facebook about make sure you take them off after Memorial Day. Why wasn't it posted at Piermont Cemetery? Because this thing was revised in February. What was posted on the township Facebook page was a reminder saying, please make sure all flowers and decorations are on the headstone. There. I understand. At the cemetery. So number 15 says, trees, shrubs, and individual plantings, which is a decoration, shall not be permitted on any grave or walkway. So planting flowers on a walkway. A walkway is anywhere in between the grass I can't walk on the headstone. I can't walk on the foundation. That's it. I mean, that one kind of explains it. Unfortunately, it should say, <laughs> must, you know, we, I, I don't know if we amended or, or we added to it to just be more clear to say all flowers, all decorations have to be on headstones or foundations or they will be removed. I mean, I, I guess just making it that much more clear is all we hey, can do. Don't you think that the families that put flowers out there deserve at least three days to go back and get them? So. There was no mowing needed I think they, at the cemetery. Those three right. days. Those three days, there's not. When is Caleb supposed to go get them? Should he go out there in the rain? No, no I meant storming. the families didn't get a chance to go get their flowers. So there's, I mean, if the, there are flowers all over uh, Providence, uh, Pleasant Hill. There were flowers all over Piermont this evening. And we had 70 a, mile an hour winds. 70 yes. mile an hour winds. Absolutely. If you were that concerned about if you, if people were that I'm talking about they were that concerned about their flowers on their grave they would have went and checked on them this evening or after the storm okay. make sure they were put back in the right spot. Day, I would think you would allow at least three days. It has nothing to do with a holiday or anything else. It has to do with the care of the cemetery. We do not have ten people that walk around and clean up the cemeteries every day. We have to fit that in with everything else that we have two and a half people to do through a standard work week, and that includes digging graves, doing funerals. Up road debris, road working with the county. It's unfortunate, but that's why the rules are stated the way that they are. It would be nice if people went and cleaned up the cemeteries with their flowers. Yes. And what about people that had to go to work the next day? They couldn't get them. I understand. Paul, I understand what you're saying. And to me, you know, because I thought in the back of my mind, you know, maybe we could do extended after Memorial Day, but then, okay, so we extend it to three days, and right. you come out and you pick up yours. Right. He doesn't pick up his. Okay, that's his problem. No, but you then here comes problem. Monday, and he goes, well, it was a weekend, and I didn't have time to get there, so now I've got his flowers. So now we're back to the way it was before, where nobody did anything. So with that being said, I want to bring this back so we can come to a conclusion. I know my three minutes have gone a long time. Um, June 30th, I'm going to set this up with Karen. June 30th is a Thursday evening. I'm going to have a meeting here at the township office. I mean, it's, it's just going to be me. Maybe Caleb, if he's available, he might even be going out of town that week. Come. Let's, let's, let's have a round table. If we can say something along those lines, like, you know what, let's skip a mowing after a holiday. 
this Memorial Day, whatever else. Mm -hmm. Let's let's brainstorm those things and let's come together because I <coughs> have dreaded this meeting for two weeks because I didn't want to have to defend the rules that we have to live by. It's and it, it's frustrating for me. It's so so yes. and, and, and I don't want this to happen to you again. And what Trustee Music is talking about is he's setting up a committee with the residents to work on beautifying. We'll maintaining us Pleasant Hills archway stuff with the on? cemeteries yeah. and, and being more active because here's the thing is that if we have more people that are willing to do stuff in their free time and we don't have to have these guys go three times a week to the cemeteries because there's going to be a, a blowing wind greater than five miles an hour that makes everybody a little bit more happy but until we have that we have constraints with manpower with time and with resources so we are working to come up with this, this has been in the works it's for the work last month I've, I've, since we had an issue, I think, with the archway. Yep. So, which wasn't taken care of was a security hazard and could have fallen on someone at any point. So, that said, I recommend people attend June 30th uh, at any meeting, seven o'clock. We'll put it, a notice up on the township Facebook. And let me tell you something, just to be clear, trustees for the most part will never post on any township Facebook group <laughs> other than the official township Facebook page, period. Because if history has shown us anything, it's how quickly things can go sideways in both directions and deep. You saw that post. I saw it. I won't comment on it, but I saw it. And I also saw how it went about 10 different directions with different comments and different people commenting on different things. <clears throat> kind of took away from your point a little bit, but we we saw it, we heard it, we understood. Read it five times. But we were ready to. I did too. I reread it four or five times before yeah. I pushed. And, and we were ready to talk about it, and we do have stuff in in the works to help offset some of this. But right now, we have constraints. We operate within those constraints, and sometimes it doesn't go the way anybody would want. But I thought when I got tasked with cemeteries, well, that's an easy job. <laughs> It is not. It is not. And, and I want to take it seriously. And I want, just like the lady, um, when, when this first happened, I mean, just to say, before, uh, before they came elected, um, it, I think it's, it's her daughter's grave. And my response to her was, you know, I, I'm sorry this has happened to you. I don't want it to happen to anybody else. I don't want this to happen to anybody else. So let's there's always going to be something else that happens. And, and if we can mitigate that, or we can at least come together and say, you know what, the residents would really rather see a, a, us not mow this week. You know, if we, we mowed on Friday before Memorial Day, let's give it a week. Let's, let's, let's do something different. I want to hear that from you guys. I want to hear that from you guys. Okay. Well, I don't want to hear it on Facebook. Why was that put on Facebook that you had to pick up your flowers by the end of Memorial Day. Nobody put it that. He didn't say that. Nobody it's, told me that that's where it was. No, it said. So where was it that that said that we needed to be, that that they would be taken off? I'll show you. Give me a second. Or or I can show you after the meeting if that will suffice. We can move on. Whatever. I know there are people. That'd be okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's. Yeah. I'll get with you after the meeting. Okay. <coughs> okay. All right. Uh, I'm still not satisfied. So. I'm sorry. We will. We're going to work on this. Okay. I if promise. It's, if it's supposed to be taken off Memorial Day, it should have been posted at the Any cemetery. time that they're not on the headstone or on the header footer, they it will be removed if someone sees them. Uh, it has to be. It's a safety issue for people walking through the, the cemetery or when the cemetery is being maintained. Well, it just shows disrespect for my family. Yeah. Sorry about that. All right. Butler. Hey, Haley. Haley. Hey, Thank you. Let's follow up with what I was talking about. Uh, what, why I've been in Piermont for 60 years and put flowers on up to the graveyard at Piermont for probably 50 years. And then, but there was no problem. And why, what it changed the, <clears throat> the rules so quick here. I, 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 it's what I can't understand why. It, so the what was changed? I mean, I know you fellas has got a mow, respect that. But mow, it should be mowed 
prior to the holiday, and then you wouldn't have to mow for four or five days, and you could have your flowers picked up. We could, and like always, oh, nothing would be wrong. And here it is now that you buy sixty or seventy dollars worth of flowers, and they pick them up and throw them in the dumpster. It is kind of respectable to the people that's got loved ones there and the, the family that comes to decorate and all this happens. So, so I'll, I'll say I'll say this on the subject. Um, these rules, <laughs> they were they were made 25 years ago. Uh, these rules were made 25 years ago, and I would suspect. Um, you know, our former, former uh, maintenance, maintenance supervisor, Sexton, there was probably issues 25 years ago um, when he was heavily involved and heavily, you know, busting his butt in this township. And he probably came to the trustees and said, look, guys, we have a problem. We need to make these rules. And so they didn't just arbitrarily decide we're going to make some rules for the cemeteries. I'm sure they had good reason back then. And then over the course of the last 25 years, it's just been laxed and laxed and laxed and laxed to the point of nothing was getting taken care of. And now, uh, you know, in the last two years, a year and a half, we, we've got to take control of these cemeteries. They look awful. I mean, I don't think anybody would disagree that they don't need work. So for us to say, we're going to follow these rules that are in place that have been in place for 25 years. Yes, we revised up, and I, and I, and I want to know what the revision was we made that's the difference between what it was. We took some rules from the township that we got the idea for the sign for. Okay. And we had posted some additional rules yeah. to make sure that they were clear. Okay. It wasn't, so, we added a bunch of rules right. in February. That so, so these rules were, have, have been there for a long time. They just were never enforced. We have taken the responsibility of saying, we're going to turn this around and we're going to make sure these cemeteries are moving in the right direction. Caleb's only been here since July. He's not even been here a full year. So, so maybe there's some things we need to change. I understand that. We're going to address that. Um, now, with that being said, if it's going to impact or, or affect mowing, we have a contract with this folks, with these folks that, that and I watch them. I mean, there's three of them out there with the weed eaters going around every single grave. It's this cemetery, this cemetery, this cemetery. It takes hours to do that. We want to make sure they look good. That's our responsibility to take care of. <laughs> the, the timing, the timing was awful for Memorial Day. It was awful. It was mowed on Friday. Then you had Saturday, Sunday. Monday was the holiday. That's three days after a mow. It's going to rain Wednesday, Thursday. That's that's six days after the mow. It was due the seventh day on Friday again. I remember the eighth day actually on Friday. It was due to be mowed that next Friday. Caleb said. I have to do it today. The weather's not going to permit me to do it the next two days. And then the cemetery is not going to be ready for the, for the guys to come in and mow. The timing's just awful. It's just awful on this. No one likes it. That's it. I mean, it, it's, it, it's not intentional. There was never an intention to say, nope, after Memorial Day, all the flowers are gone. That's not what we wanted. Absolutely not what we wanted. We like, I think everybody likes seeing flowers on cemetery graves. It, 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 it livens the place up. It makes it look better. So I, I, I don't think I can give you a great answer other than it's just our job to take care of them. Yeah. And, we, and, and that's what we're trying to do. Over the recent years, uh, the rules weren't followed at all. People planted shrubs, bushes, flowers, gardens, <laughs> all sorts of stuff on their gravestone. And they were allowed to do it almost in perpetuity, which made them think it was okay to keep doing. We had a uh, event where we let go of the guy who had been heading up the roads and cemeteries. And we brought in a new gentleman and we said, here's the rules for taking care of the cemeteries. We understand that things haven't been followed. We understand that things haven't been done the way that they need to be. And there's going to be some pains with it. It's just going to happen. The other thing is we don't have the time or resources to mow the cemeteries ourselves. We literally the last couple of years have had to pay someone else to do it because if our guys are mowing, that takes two days out of their week and they've got numerous other things to do and we can't afford more people. And there's only so much time in a day to get that kind of work done. So all we had were the rules. 
we had to enforce them. It's unfortunate that this happened right after Memorial Day. That doesn't make anyone happy. Mm -hmm. nobody, nobody was happy with this. But it was an example of what happens when the flowers aren't put on the grave markers, headstones, the footers, et cetera. And like I said, even if you put them on there, a good five mile an hour wind will blow flowers off. And the next thing you know, if you're in Piermont, they're in the field, they're in the road, they're down the street. Um, None of those were touched, by the way. Yeah. They were all still there tonight. If the wind didn't blow them, if 70 mile an hour wind didn't blow them off yesterday, they're all still there. Yeah. Every one of them. We didn't take anybody's off. I mean, to, to your point, we didn't remove anyone's flowers. We cleaned up the grounds. Yep. That's it. So. Yeah, they had a, you know, there was lots of flags up there too, you know. So let me comment on that. That's one mistake that we did make as far as uh, we did not, we were not aware that the VFW would come the next week and remove them. Is that correct, Missy? I offered to take them down. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yes. So, so that was uh, next year. They'll stay up. They'll stay up for, for, for I think it's a week. Yeah. Um, and it's probably going to coincide with not touching any flowers for a week too, going forward. Was, that, was they pulled out and thrown in the dumpster too, the flags? No, they're safe. No. Those are reused every year. Yeah. So we pull them out. We reuse our fires year after year too. Why, you know? That's something that we're going to deal with. Like we're going to make a decision on that. As far as days go, I, I think I'd be, in setting it as a rule going forward, I come to the meeting on the 30th. Let's discuss these things. I, I like the idea. I didn't realize people reuse their flowers. I didn't. I did. I, I did not know that. <laughs> Never. Uh, you know, and maybe it's to the point of I've been fortunate. I haven't had a lot of death in my family. Okay. So yeah, we don't. We don't. I don't go to a cemetery often. Um, so so it's not been something my family's ever really done is put flowers out. Um, so your comments aren't falling on deaf ears. They're not. We're working to improve the situation for everyone, the residents, the cemeteries, the township personnel. We're working on developing a plan to make this a lot more unlikely to happen in the future. And hopefully you'll join us in that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Heather Hartshorn. Hi. You guys pretty much covered everything. I'm not sure I have much to talk about. Okay, I am Heather Hartshorn. I do not join these meetings because I can't keep my mouth shut most of the time. But here I am today, and I want to address a couple of things. Um, I have a captive audience today that are normally not here. So from 2004 to 2019, Dale Sim was a township trustee. I can understand you, honey. Yeah. Yeah. So from 2008 to 2021, Rhonda Bankin was the township fiscal officer. For over three decades, Mike Kraft sat up here and he was the employee of this township who worked and supervised the roads, the maintenance and the cemeteries. These people are not sitting up here today. Uh, there's a reason these people aren't sitting up here today. And I think you've heard some of the, the issues that the township has had. The ones responsible for the township falling apart are not up here. So for 16 years, Dale Sim happily sat in that seat right there. He collected a paycheck, he collected benefits, all aligning his pockets with the extra cash he saved on his property tax. Due to the CAUV program, he boasts so much about. 2021, Rhonda resigned abruptly, and she's now under investigation by the state of Ohio. In 2021, Mike Kraft was fired for insubordination, and shortly after, an employee was cleaning out the maintenance garage, and he found three human remains. It was said those remains were there for about 13 years. Complaining about flowers is a little insignificant after something like that. The troubles of this township didn't start yesterday. They didn't happen yesterday. They didn't start overnight. They didn't start a week 
two weeks <clears throat> a year. The financial troubles didn't happen overnight. The nuisance properties <laughs> that have been forgotten and ignored can't be fixed tomorrow. The cemeteries did not fall apart last year. It took years of neglect, of power, of abuse of power, ignorance. It drove this township into the ground. We can't fix it overnight. We can't fix it in a few years. But you know what? The current administration, the trustees, people are sitting up here, they're trying to do that. That's what they're trying to do. It takes a lot for, to take a dying township and bring it back to a standard where it should be. We were a laughing stock for quite some time. Talk to other townships. Only my hope that this township can continue moving forward with the trustees and the current administration. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Amy Wright. Just quickly with um, AES's recent rate increase, I'd like to ask the township to relook at electric aggregation. On it. Perfect. That's all I wanted to say. I just think it's time. And I would suggest you bring in different people to talk to the township residents because having worked for DPNL for over 14 years, um, I understand it. I don't think people really do understand aggregation and there is a lot of power in group purchasing. So <coughs> make sure we're looking at that again. Thank you. And to add to that, Amy, yes. today was posted on the Perry Township Facebook page, um, kind of a thing for people to look at their bills. Um, I recently discovered with several <coughs> others that years ago, there was different groups that came through, signed people up. A lot of people don't realize they are working on expired contracts. With those expired contracts, people are paying as high as 12 cents per kilowatt hour already previous to AES's increase. So I highly recommend and I showed kind of what to look for on the bill to see where you're at. If you have questions, you can reach out to uh, Fiscal Officer Grill. She's been digging into this for the township. And last time <coughs> we have it on the levy was with Trebell and we have them, they're wanting to do it again. So we're going to bring him out to have another meeting. Um, and uh, they are second in the state of Ohio or in, in Columbus. I don't know on that because I talked to him this evening. So very well known, very very popular. Okay. Let me make out the first name, Burkett. Sure. Yeah. Please, sir. I've only just got a few things to add to uh, what you brought up. Um, first of all, your first name? Michael, first of all, I do have a copy of the rules and regulations of the cemetery from 1998, which is 24 years ago, if you'd like to look at it. Um, I kind of disagree with you when you say that there's rules have not been added to, because there's a lot of things in there that talks about shrubbery, as long as it's within three, not three foot high, it's up to the lot owner to take care of that stuff it's allowed to be so far away from the headstone scissors allowed to be artificial decorations there's nothing about timeline or time limits of taking things down um i have eight generations buried in that cemetery the oldest one being a veteran of the eight war of 1812 he's on the monument up there He's a fourth great grandfather. Our family has a lot of people in that cemetery. And there was a lot of things that were taken off of headstones the very next day. And a lot of my family goes out there <coughs> within a few days and removes things because they're put on headstones each year. They're very expensive. Um, what else did I want to say? I have a uh, nephew that was buried there within the past couple of months. Uh, there's no foundation. There's no headstone yet. And flowers was removed off of his head or off of his gravesite. Uh, very disrespectful. Which cemetery? 
Huh? This is Pleasant Hill. Paramount. Paramount. I'm sorry. Paramount. Yeah. Paramount. I'm sorry. You know, I will come to you June 30th. Thank you. Because something needs to be done. You know, um, ever since I was a little child, over the last, we'll say, 50 years, I've been at that cemetery. And there's never been an issue with the Memorial Day celebration out there at that cemetery. And this year it has become an issue. And I think all of these people in here are deserving. They want to know why. And it needs to be fixed because these are our families. I understand there's people that don't pick things up, mm -hmm. but should the people that do suffer for it? I don't think they should. I think that's what Mr. Music's trying to do is it's, on your committee is exactly it. I mean, yeah, but to the point, you know, 24 years ago, all shrubbery or plants shall be planted, pruned, or maintained by lot owner. The township trustees or sexton shall have the authority to remove a shrub or plant whenever it is necessary and advisable, or when it interferes with the maintenance or exceeds three feet in height. And so I think, you know, anything that, you know, interferes with the maintenance was, was what we followed. Um, now, can there be exceptions? Can, can we make concessions? I think so. And that's what I'd like to talk about. And so moving forward, Let's address some of these issues. If you've got other issues, not just Memorial Days, bring them to us. Let's I, let's write these down. Let's get them all out. I want to hear them. I personally this, do this, not live in Perry Township, but I will be buried in Paramount Cemetery. <laughs> so I will reside in this township for eternity, you know? And, and it's, you know, I've got grandchildren that are probably going to come visit my great site. Can I make a copy of this? Yes. The, uh, the other thing that I wanted to say is yeah. that as a township, we are governed by risk, right? Everything that we do, we have risk mitigation with the state that we work with them through a number of things. Uh, we have inspections of buildings, we have inspections of vehicles, that if there's any risk to the township, we either have to sign off on the risk or we have to fix it because it opens us up to litigation and other issues. <laughs> the unfortunate issue with the cemeteries is, is that there's a lot of risk around the cemeteries. If someone's in a wheelchair or has a walker and is trying to walk through to a grave and there's flowers all over the grass, how's that person supposed to get to the grave that they're going to spend time with their loved one? They can't. So I agree with you. That's just like my stuff needs to be worked out, but there is also a risk of making sure that anyone who has a loved one in that cemetery, can get to that cemetery, can walk through that cemetery, can get to the grave of their loved one and spend time there. It's part of the maintaining of the cemeteries. We have an obligation. We don't make money on the cemeteries. And they have every lot sold, every grave sold, has to support that cemetery in perpetuity. When we run out of lots, we don't get to say we're done. We have to continue to maintain those cemeteries. So we have to make sure that they're safe, that they're clean, that they're well taken care of. And we are, as it was said, we're, we're playing a game of catch up right now. And we're going to make mistakes on it. Most definitely. I promise. Because we're, we're not perfect, but we're also trying to play catch up to getting the cemeteries to where anybody and everybody can go and spend time in those cemeteries. You heard us sitting here talking about doing a demo with some equipment just so that we can fix the roadways in Pleasant Hill Cemetery. It's people very first can't, place people can't walk through that cemetery right now. Mm -hmm. The roads have fallen apart. There's potholes in there that are, they'll, they'll strip your transmission. <laughs> I mean, easily. <laughs> so for sure. we're trying, I, I think, I, I, I want to make sure that you understand. This conversation, series of conversations makes no one happy because we're, we have obligations to the townships, to the residents, to people who purchase graves in the cemeteries, to ensure that they can visit those whenever they would like and do whatever they would like within those cemeteries, within the rules. Rules weren't followed for a long time. And a lot of stuff started happening. All of a sudden we start applying the rules. We started making people very unhappy because if rules aren't enforced, people think that they're okay. And so, the I also need to bring to your attention, though, and that is with my family, my mother and my father are buried there. Mm -hmm. And I have two sisters that are buried very close to my mother, my father. I will be buried on the other side. 
there's a lot of family and stuff that puts flowers on those graves. Right. And you're not, you're, there's not enough room on them headstones and those foundations to be able to put all the flowers. It's all Paula's list. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of history as far as people taking care of it. And, and I will tell you that something has changed in the last year and it wasn't by us. If you go to Piermont Cemetery, you notice how all the trees are missing? Yeah, back of the, I noticed that. Too. The farmer went through and he pulled everything which it was a risk for him because it was messing up his, his farmland. He goes through and pulls them all. Guess what? There's no longer a windbreak in Piermont Cemetery. And the, the, it's as flat as can be at any time. That's why I was saying a five mile an hour wind is more than enough to get up underneath something or push something out. And next thing you know, once it's on the ground, it can tumble anywhere. The Brookville commander of the VFW said he replaces Piermont flag more than any other cemetery flag in, in the area because it's so windy out there. <coughs> uh, just... Yeah, you have 98s. Here's 2017's number six was amended then. No plants, shrubbery, or shepherd's hooks. I mean, just wiped it out, right? Things will change over time. Let's let's try and make something that that works for everybody that everybody can agree on. I was going back to where you said the rules haven't changed since in 25 years. I, I didn't mean that. I just meant they were here. They've been here for 25 years. There have been rules for 25 years. That's all I meant. There's been rules for 25 years. And they've slowly, slowly, slowly over that course of two decades, two and a half decades. And, who, make, and who's making, the one that amends or changes the rules? The trustees do. So you're the ones that change the rules. Okay. Yep. So it's, it's, ultimately, it's our responsibility to make sure that they're taken care of. Yeah. We do take recommendations. Mr. Hoops, who, as was mentioned, is the sexton for the cemeteries for Perry Township. And we have 23? Uh, we, we have four actives. Okay. And we have... Oh, I, I could look at Dale and 12. <laughs> so they're all documented on the township webpage. Some we, of them have, we have at least 12 other cemeteries that aren't active that we also maintain. So they're, they're all through the township. It's something we take seriously. And we're trying to open up the conversation with the residents. Those that don't even live here, that have family in the cemetery, that have moved away. Uh, we had no way to really convey how we were enforcing the rules. So we put a sign up there. Right. The problem was that the little sign at the bottom has been there for at least the last couple of years. And that is, that is a complete clean out of the cemeteries twice a year. Even if you put it on that day, if they come across the grave and they're taking them off on October 1st, they're taking them off. And it's just that no, I did get clarification on that because well, <laughs> I know I know Caleb has made concessions on that. No, Zach, if it looks brand new, or if I watched him put it there, right. I, yeah, I'm not taking it. But I'm leaving it there. But we try to leave judgment out like of it. We can come to a compromise. Well, I'd love to. Right, really and that's what we're trying to do: yes. come up with something that works for the residents, people who have loved ones in the cemeteries, but also works for the township because we are the ones ultimately that are risk. If someone has something in a cemetery and someone walks through there and they fall over it. And it wasn't on a headstone, they're not going to call the family that the flowers were on the grave. They're going to call the township. And that's what we had to protect against. So we're trying, we have a lot of different sides to this to try to work out solutions, mitigate. And we feel that the best way to do that is through conversations with residents, people who have an interest in the cemeteries, and make them part of the, of the solution that we're trying to build. For everything that's happened prior to that, I do apologize, but we do have limitations that we have to operate within, and that just happened to be the perfect storm of it was it literally the the day after Memorial Day, the amount of wind and rain that was going to happen, it would have opened up a whole series of issues if the flowers had been or the decorations had gone airborne and it went in the road, down the road, or wherever else. So, okay, thank you, thank you. All right. Was it? Was there anybody else? I didn't have any other comments on the sheet. Yes, sir. I'd just like to add something real quickly. I understand that we all have to have rules that we have to live by. The last few times that I've gone to Paramount, it looks barren. It's haunting to, to drive past that place and see no flowers at all. I've never seen it that way for the 20, 25 years that I've been going to cemeteries. And we're talking about what's going on here as something we're making it kind of seem like it's just particular to Paramount. 
my family goes around to probably a dozen different cemeteries to pay respects because it's sacred to us to do so. <clears throat> there are signs at those cemeteries that say flowers will be removed the week of June 6th. It tells the people that are bringing them there that they're safe to be left. What you're doing you're taking something that is sacred to us, and I'm trusting my eternity to you, because I'm going to be buried there someday, too. I would like to think that my children and my family feel welcome to come there. But you drive past Piermont now, and I don't see welcome. I see barren cemetery. Your rules are being enforced. That's good. That's good for you. But don't we have to have people-friendly rules, too? Yes. You might want to consider that when you make these rules. The cemeteries in Dayton don't have a problem letting flowers stay up for a, almost a week after. They had the same weather that you had here. It didn't seem to bother them. Why should it be such an issue? And you have to go out. The thing that upset me more than anything else was that there was no ahead of time things to, to let us know that you were going to do that. You talk about things blowing out, you have to know where my flowers are because I stake them down with yard spikes. Remember that? I don't. Sorry, I didn't pull them out. They're not only staked down with yard spikes, I had bungee cords to keep them where I put them. I went to great expense to decorate my family's sacred monuments. I went to great pains and, and took a lot of time to put those flower arrangements together, and I put them back every year, or I renew them. I don't feel safe leaving things there anymore. That's a shame. So when you make your rules and whenever you do things and you're going to rearrange things, keep them thought in mind. Those are sacred monuments. We go there to pay homage to our route to our our families i would like to think that someday my children will come to see my grave but i don't know if that's going to happen if they have to come to some place where we don't even allow flowers for more than 10 hours there's still flowers there today <laughs> there were the other day they're there right now i just drove through it i know there's still there. in that grave are in faces and that's it there's there's heads there's still some head i mean okay. Guys, it's still there tonight. I was just there before I came here. And you're doing a good job. I'm not saying right. you're not. I know. One, one last thing that I want to say is this: there are cemeteries around here that unfortunately don't allow any decorations. We don't want to be managing our cemeteries that way. No. no. We don't want to do it that way. But unfortunately, you're trying to wrangle in and ensure the safety of our cemeteries, the cleanliness and the making sure that they're well maintained. It's caused some issues. And I'll, I'll take the blame for that. I have no problem because I sit on this side of the table. That's my job. I will never shy away from a conversation. I will never shy away from someone reaching out to me. And for the record, no one reached out to me either when all this happened. I heard about it forthhand. And as just a trustee, I am also the president trustee but I'm a trustee. I didn't hear anything. I saw it on Facebook and not even the township's Facebook page. Prospering Perry Township is not associated with this administration in any way, shape or form. You will not see anyone posting on it from the township for the most part. You may see an informational post being shared there from time to time, but people need to understand that in the past, asking questions wasn't welcome. Approaching a trustee wasn't welcomed. We've been trying to change this whole mentality. We are available to talk with you, to sit with you, to hear you, and to try to make you part of what we're trying to make for Perry Township tomorrow. And it's your township. It is. Just as much as it is ours. So I want, I love that. I don't have a burial spot yet. I would love to think as, as someone who served this township, I want to be buried here. It, and I got to want my kids to put flowers on my grave and reuse them over and over again. Um, so 
guys, we're gonna we're gonna get a resolution on this. No, everybody's gonna be happy. We're not gonna fix everything after one meeting. But this is a step in the right direction. Okay, so that's the best I can do for you. I I, I agree one hundred percent with all of you. I just want to make sure. To Jason's point, we still have a responsibility here to maintain them, and we still have to follow certain rules. If we're gonna if we're gonna deviate from this rule, what other rule are we gonna deviate from later? Right. So we got to hold our standards. Standards can be changed. We can be adapted. Just one quick comment. Take ten seconds. <clears throat> We've got a lot of baby boomers in here tonight. <laughs> I don't get on the internet. Well, there you go. Some of them here do. Well, and to be fair, <laughs> you have a because you can call the township any time. Miss Kaler, who answers the phones Monday through Friday during business hours, can connect you with any one of us by email, by phone. You can leave a message saying, I'd really like to meet up with you and talk. We can come to your house. We can meet somewhere else. We want to hear from you, and we don't expect everyone to have internet access. That would be nice. We don't expect everyone to understand how to find a township web page or Facebook, but our job is to put the information out there while also leaving ourselves open to be able to talk to the people that aren't savvy when it comes to IT and don't care about the internet so much. So, if before you leave, if you want to talk with Ms. Kaler, the township main number rings to her desk. I've called her many times. I'm sure you have. <laughs> well, and in all fairness, too, if I'm not here to answer the phone, I'm probably out zoning. I leave a note on the door. So leave that message and I will call you back. And if I don't know the answer that you're looking for, I'll find it. But leave me a message. I've gone in the and the message light has been lit up and I hit the message. Ten seconds. There's nothing there. Leave a message and I'll call you back. Any other comments? Any other? Thank you all. Yes. Uh, I have a question. Yes. And I have no dog in this fight. You have three minutes. Because <laughs> this is for you. And it's three, and I don't know because I haven't read the rules. Everybody's talking about, I mean, y'all are upset because your things got through. My question is, in these rules, is there something that says where these decorations, flowers, whatever it is, are to be placed if there's a specific size limitation? If there's no rule state, and, and that's just my question. Does it say that these have to be put there? Whatever it is. So if they're not supposed to be put in any specific spot, does it say where they cannot be put? If these are done, so my question is, is that if there's nothing that says how they can or cannot be placed properly, what differentiated between whose wood and how they would be and what would not be removed other than the mowing? So if there's nothing that tells me I can't do something as a natural human being, I'm going to do it. Well, I think that's where, and that's obviously why everybody's upset. <laughs> I mean, that, and that's what I'm saying. Everybody is focused on the date that things are to be removed. Yeah. But I haven't heard anybody say anything about, is there anything in these, however many rules there are, that says Correct. where they're be placed at. Correct. If there's a size limitation, and we that's had an, what I'm asking. We, had an expecta we have an expectation. That we followed that we that, that we have in mind. You all have an expectation that you expected, and those things clashed, right? But Where we're at tonight, it, it was it was unclear. It does say foundation and or headstone. Yeah. Okay, so it does say yes. where I mean, it's hard to be yes. placed. Right. But, but I think to the point of okay, uh, you know. And that's what I was asking because I don't know. I've not read these rules. Yeah, yeah. This gentleman's going to go out and he staked it down. He didn't want his stuff blowing away. He did what he thought was right. To secure them to and around the grave, we have a conflict there. Right, but we need to be we need to be more clear. I, I um, guess what I'm kind of getting at is, and that fairness to both sides, we can't just look at what we want to look at. We have to look at everything. Money's money, and I get that. But just like with my job, I can't take some things personally. I just I can't take them personally. And if I do something that messes up that I don't follow the rules, 
I can't go back and say, yeah, but there's this, this, and this. No, but you, everything has to, it, both sides have to follow the rules. Yeah. So we can be, I guess if, if I had done something, I can be upset about my stuff being removed, but then I also have to look at the aspect of that I also put the things where I was supposed to put them. Had I done that, would this have happened? And I mean, I'm, I'm not just being, because like I said, I have nothing in this. I, I'm just kind of looking at things both ways. And I'd be upset too. 60 bucks is 60 bucks. More. But I kind of have to look at where my responsibility lies in it too. And if I have some responsibility in it because of where I did or did not play something, then I have to own that. And, and that's just that's just looking at things straight across the board. And I mean, no disrespect to anybody. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. All right, I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. <laughs> Trustee Music. Yes. Trustee Hartshorn. Yes. Trustee Mears. Yes. Thank you guys all for coming.